Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool zipper overlay. This is a new to me technique actually. I only started doing this recently um, because I find it to be a lot easier, I'll show you the backside, uh, than doing a welt pocket, which I'll link to my tutorial. <laughs> Alien fingers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just really weird. Anywho, I'm gonna show you in this video how to make this bad boy. Whoa! Let's go. So what is it that you need for this particular exercise or project? You're gonna need uh, clips, pens, whatever it is you like to use to, I guess, like attach things to each other. Um, a rotary blade, scissors, something like that. Um, marking utensils. I like to use uh, gel pens and uh, sometimes I'll use um, my chalk, uh, but uh, this is a vinyl fabric, so I had to use gel pen to kind of just mark where I wanted my pocket to go in a way. Uh, I highly recommend double-sided tape, but not the wash away stuff. That's mostly for clothing. This is actually quarter inch leather tape. Um, that you can get off of um, Amazon or Tandy Leather, and some of the smaller vendors are actually carrying it now as well. Um, giant scissors or small scissors, whichever you know you, you find great. Your lining, you need a front and a back for the lining. Um, prepared zipper, I'm not gonna go through how to do a zipper um, from zipper tape, that's a completely different tutorial. Um, you then need your prepared um, uh, overlay. This is in vinyl, and again, like I strongly suggest that you do your overlay um, out of vinyl or, or leather. If you do it with um, fabric, you know, like canvas or something, it's just going to fray, and at that point you might as well just do a welt zipper pocket um, because you'd have to like make a special overlay and all that blah, blah, blah too complicated. Now, usually a pattern that calls for an overlay will have an overlay piece, um, but just in case, I had actually purchased these, this is like so not a placement or anything, um, I promise, but I actually bought these zipper overlays, um, these templates, they're acrylic, um, and they're, they're like pre-sized seven, eight, and nine inches. Um, which, you know, the smallest is actually too big for this bag that I'm working on, but it's actually not too difficult to just like do one side and then slide in and do the other to get the width that you want. Um, but I got these off of um, that template shop, which was formerly known as Tops and Bobbins. So if you are interested in these, I'll put a link below for you. Um, but I, I actually really like these. Um, and another thing people like to use that I, I deeply regret selling, <laughs> but uh, if you have like an SVG cutter, uh, what Cricut, Silhouette, and like the Brother Scanning Cut, if you have something like that, that this is the perfect use for it. Um, but actually the way I cut this out was I just did straight lines and made a rectangle. Um, I used the template to draw in the curves and I only cut those with scissors, but for the inside, I actually used an X-Acto knife. So, which is just a crafting knife that you can get in a big box crafting store. Um, and uh, yeah, now we're kind of off to the races. That's what you need to do this thing. So now let's actually do the thing. So the first thing you're gonna do is move all this off to the side, pull into the middle uh, your panel piece that you want to do. A lot of people will do this on the inside. I actually do this because I'm lazy. So here I can show you an example of how lazy I am, because I'm so lazy. Um, I don't like to do the 3D pockets on mini backpacks. I really don't. Um, they take a lot of extra time. They are too small to be useful. Um, and if you do a pocket like this, you get a little more depth you can actually put more stuff into it um, and it looks just fine. And you can, you can really accent it. And it also allows you to show off the fabric. So if you do a mini backpack, I mean, it's totally up to you. This is one that I've done um, recently. I'm trying to nail down the depth to get that kind of signature um, <clears throat> fly look. 
<laughs> it's just I'm so I'm so professional. Um, but that's one that I've done recently, so you can kind of see where we're going with it. Um, now I went ahead and I took the pattern piece and I kind of just marked like about where the lines are for uh, you know for the interior portion of of the overlay so that I could, I know this is where it needs to set. But one of the things I like to do and, and why I am a big advocate of having a cutting mat like this is you can take one of your longer rulers or any kind of straight edge thing and line it up with the markings that you made and line it up against the table. And then you know that when you place this, it's going to be level um, because if you're anything like me and ever so slightly uh, ADHD, or, uh, well, ADHD, yes, but OCD, then it's going to drive you absolutely nuts if it's, if it's crooked. I can go with slightly off center, but crooked gets a heck of doodle no from me. So you're going to take this piece, which is your zipper overlay, and set it right side down. This is where the double-sided tape comes into play. Where is the end of it? Who knows? So we're gonna put up on the top edge, we're gonna put the tape there. Do not put it down here. That will become quite evident soon as to why you don't do that. You really only need to hold it in place anyway. So you're gonna put it on the extreme top edge and the extreme bottom edge. So extreme, it'll make you wonder if you've had caffeine. Or not, I mean, I don't know. I'm recording this in the morning between meetings. So here we go. All right, so we've got that in place. And there's fuzz. I'm gonna pick the fuzz off of there. So again, double checking, everything is level. And you're only gonna take off the topmost tape. My genius will be evident to you soon. So take off that protective film so that you have the double-sided tape. And you're going to take the bottom and kind of line it up and get any, actually it would probably help if I centered the ruler a bit too, to just make sure, because then I can use that as a guide as well, because see the six is now in the middle. Ooh. Anywho, you're gonna line up the bottom here and get it centered and just hold it down and let the back fall. Just let it naturally fall and then gently finger press it. See, okay, that's pretty cool. So now it's, it's there, you can eyeball it, make sure it looks pretty cool. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the height on this one. Um, so I'm gonna lower it a bit. And again, like I just, I like to show off when I make mistakes. Mistakes just make you human. So we're just gonna gently peel that off. And again, that's fine because it's double-sided tape and you know, it's a thing. So line it up. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. So I have to worry about my seam allowance. <laughs> line it up and just kind of let it gently lower itself down and then just gently tap and rub it down. And there you go. See, that gives me a little more wiggle room with, with regard to the, uh, yeah. Okay. Now, now's the part where kittens just goes bonkers and is like, actually, well, actually, I want to slide it over just a smidge more. <laughs> I swear I'll get to the tutorial. Oh, no, this is pretty helpful to see when people mess up. So I kind of tend to leave my mistakes in place. At least it's not crooked, right? Okay, now you can remove the ruler if you were using that as a guide, and now you can go underneath and you can take the protective film off of the lower tape. And I suggest holding it up like in the center with your index fingers and then your thumb and then just boop, let it fall. Just let it naturally do what it wants to do. And then you can finger press it in place. So what this does, when you, when you do that, if you try to place them both at the same time, because this, the middle is so loosey-goosey with it being cut out like that, um, it may make the whole, you may like accidentally pinch the center together. I do that a lot when I've done like welt pockets 
So I'm trying to help you avoid doing that because then you'll spend hours on this. You'll be like, ah, it's all wrong. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go to the sewing machine. Let me show you this with the, the uh, my seam ripper. You're gonna just top stitch around the outer edge, just the outer edge right there. So you don't need to worry about anything else. All right, cool. So let's go over to the machine and uh, do the thing. Okay, so here we are at the machine. I have a top stitch, uh, stitch length. Uh, I, I tend to start down in the lower corner right ahead of, of the curve section. Um, and I, I know some people will like to, uh, you know, uh, pull through and bind off that way. I don't, um, I guess I'm, I'm chaotic evil when it comes to sewing um, or lazy. I don't know, but, um, but I actually, um, I'm okay with having, um, you know, the, the backstitch uh, show. Uh, you know, typically I don't notice, and if people are looking at that, I probably screwed something else up with the bag in a fairly colossal manner. So, but I only, I don't like move forward inches and then back inches either. I just go up one or two and back one or two, and then, and that's it. So we're just gonna top stitch right around the edge, and I'm literally up against the edge of my foot here. Um, so that will be like an eighth of an inch. Just making sure it's like something kind of like my, my belt needs work on this machine. I do pivot along the corners. I want to make sure it looks good. And I know that I am not a race car driver. And if I go try Tokyo drifting around that uh, rounded corner, I'm going to mess something up. <laughs> so I just do it by hand. If you don't need to, please explain to me how you do it um, and your level of witchcraft, because I've never been able to do it without messing up. So, and now I'll go straight. And do my little pivot technique. Pivot! <laughs> and more pivoting. Ah! Get up the staircase. It was weird when I have to narrate these things. It's like, what am I doing even? And straight and back. And I don't, I don't like double backstitch over the originals. So it, it's there and you can see it, but it's not like the most unsightly thing in the world. Could be worse, could be as it. So, clear off my machine of the spare thread. And now that's what you're looking at in terms of the top stitch on the outer edge. So let's talk about what we do with the center portion here because you're probably thinking, uh, yeah, a zipper can't go there because you totes have fabric. Okay, so back at the table, um, you see that we have all of this in place. Um, so now what you're going to do is actually cut this away. You're going to outright remove this little center section up a ways um, because this is going to become like the opening and you'll be like, well, I don't want raw edges to show, but that's the beauty of this is that once you go back at the very end and you top stitch all around here on the inner, the inner rectangle, you're not going to see raw edges. If you do, you've done something terribly wrong and you need to reevaluate your, uh, you know, reevaluate life choices. So it can be a little hairy to do this part with just a rotary blade. Um, I do use the rotary blade to get an initial cut in here being very careful not to actually cut into, because you can slide back and accidentally start slicing into your overlay and then it's like, well, <laughs> because this is vinyl on vinyl, I would probably cry a bit. So you can use whatever you want in terms of like cutting implements. I do find it a little difficult to do it from the front side because you can stretch out the vinyl a bit. Um, so I tend to go to the back 
and start snipping away while leaving a finger up front underneath to make sure I don't accidentally snip straight through my overlay. Um, so I will cut lengthwise up and again keeping fingers underneath so you can see how I'm kind of handling this to make sure that the scissors aren't going through that. And then you can just like kind of fold this back and snip it away this way. It's so hard to do this to ensure that my head doesn't end up in the camera. So if I look back on this and my head's in the camera, I apologize. <laughs> it's like, wow, great, great video kittens. So I'll just come in here and it just helps to kind of like eliminate the stuff in chunks, you know? So the idea is that you will only have a little bit of this vinyl inside, but you know, once you go to top stitch everything, you just don't see any of that. And it's great, and this makes it easy. This also kind of gets rid of the, the whole uh, the thing where you're doing a welt zipper pocket and you start cursing and throwing things because you can't get the corners to lay flat or they've pinched and it just looks bad. I know I've done a tutorial on welt pockets and, and they are great as an option, um, but they can be incredibly frustrating. So see, now that I've got most of the middle cut away, I can start going in and cutting away like this. And I am using very small tailor shears. There are probably better scissors I could be using for this. But the thing is, like, I definitely don't want to use a uh, rotary blade because I'll just cut straight through everything, like my fingers. And that would be bad, especially on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I'd get banned. So let's not and say we did. And I cut all the way around, keep cutting, and sliding your finger in there. Don't snip your finger, but you know, use your finger as a guide to make sure you're not accidentally grabbing anything else. And this is basically what it should look like on the back side. Um, but you know, when you're, you're, uh, you've cut everything away, this is what it should look like. And that's what it'll look like on the front, which is completely like the same thing, except now you don't see uh, in the little window here for the zipper. So for the next step, we're going to take the zipper and we're going to prepare the pocket. And the funny thing, we're not going to do this here and all together. Um, what we're going to actually do is get the zipper prepared with the pocket piece. Um, so with the linings and then we'll attach it. So let's do the zipper part. So I'm going to talk through this first and explain it. And then I will do each piece once or twice to kind of show you what it is I'm doing. Because if you're spatially challenged like me, it's kind of hard to you know, visualize what it is that's going on. But the idea is that eventually you're going to want a pocket that looks like this, so that when you open it up, you see the right side in the back and the right side in the front when you would flip it over. So that's kind of the, that's the idea. So for the first step, what you'll do is you will actually take your zipper and you will lay it top edge against top edge of one of the pocket linings, and yes, these linings are the same size, and for brevity's sake, I just made them seven inches by seven inches because I never want to try to figure out which one is this way or this way. It just, it gets annoying. <laughs> so I am going to clip the topmost edge of the zip to the topmost edge of the lining. I'll put another one in there just because I don't want to live dangerously this morning on such little coffee. So, so now you have the back of your pocket, okay? So, but you're not going to attach this with a quarter inch seam allowance. No, 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 no. You're going to do a baste across the top, um, pretty much right along the edge, and that's just to attach these pieces for the next stage. 
So what you'll do is uh, we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna baste this together um, because you won't be able to lay this flat like this with those clips in the way. So we're gonna do that. But first, for the next step, or actually no, never mind. Let's do this part first and then I'll explain the next step. That'll be a lot easier. Okay, so let's get this in here. I'm gonna have a basting length of six millimeters and I'm just gonna like right along that top edge, I'm just gonna kinda skate across it. I don't exactly want to do a quarter inch um, seam allowance. That's typically what I will do with a zipper. But for this one in particular, um, you'll, it'll make more sense once we get to it. But you'll wanna do more like an eighth of an inch. So, and we're just gonna attach this really quickly to kind of make sure it's not gonna wiggle around on us once we get to that point of attaching it to the overlay opening. So going, going, and to the end. And clean it up and see, we just have that, it's, it might be a little hard to see because, you know, True Fierce Kittens thing, I decided to use dark fabrics with dark, you know, thread. But you know, whatever, it, it's right along the top edge, eighth of an inch away, and it's just a basting stitch, nothing like constructive. All right, so now we have our zipper attached to the backing portion, just with a basting stitch. Here's the weird part. So this ends up needing to be like this. So you need your pocket linings to be right side to right side. So the way that I like to do this is you take, you take your lining like this as you would have it. Don't think about the zipper at this point. Fold it back. So roll it back and then you're going to take your zipper and hold it up, flip it to the wrong side and you're gonna put the wrong side to the right side of what will be the top, like that. So then you end up basically with a sandwich like this where it's like you'll see, you'll have your lining right sides up but the zipper is wrong side up. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time just to like nail it home. So you're gonna take, you have your, your basted piece here, which is going to end up being the lining back. You're gonna take the lining that will end up being the forward facing lining and put it right sides together with the lining that's already attached. You're gonna flip it back so that this, the top is facing down so there's the top facing down. Then you're gonna take the zipper, flip it up, and put wrong sides together up at the top. And you'll clip the topmost wrong side to what will be the topmost right side of the other lining piece. I tend to make sure that they, they are gonna line up correctly with the lining that's already attached. As you can see, I tend to cut my zippers a little over what would be the edge of the overlay because I have had zippers pull straight on through um, and, and rip up and shred. A lot of people don't realize that zipper tape is not strong. So this is basically what we have. So if you were to have your zipper uh, facing up right sides, like here's your right side of your zip, then, because this is the top, um, your wrong sides of your lining fabric will be facing up. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna baste along this line. Eighth of an inch, six millimeters for my basting stitch length, and off we go. I feel like I don't really need to explain too, too much, we're just gonna do the thing. Although let's make sure if you've got a really cute zipper pull that we get it out of the way and not stitch over it. 
And you can see I go slow and methodically. I don't want to make a mistake until I've had more coffee. <laughs> then I can't blame, then I can't blame lack of caffeine. All right. So there we go. Now, while we're here at this particularly lovely camera, I'm gonna just go ahead and fold this out so you can kind of see what it is that we're doing. So you can see that the zipper should, if, if you're looking at the right side of the zipper, it lays flat. So both of the lining pieces should be wrong side up and get curled under when you lay that zipper flat. So that's really what it should look like. And I'll show you again on the other camera, just kind of hammer home, because I know this is like a different thing and the spatial awareness of it all can be a little funky to start. Okay, we're back here now. So let's look at this again. We've got the right side of the zipper up. It kind of has made like a little <laughs> a tunnel. <laughs> um, and if you were to lay it flat by pushing down either side of the lining, then the, only the lining should basically pull under. So that's what it should look like. And then if you look with the lining right side up, it should look like a nice little sandwich with the wrong side of the zipper in there. So the idea is now you've got, whoops, I gotta do it this way, directional. Remember the zipper head when it comes to a point, that's the direction that it's going to open, like a, that's, that's the direction you want it in. If you prefer to go from left to right to open. Um, so now when you look at this, this is basically what is going to get put into your overlay like this. And you'll open up the zipper and you will see, you'll see the lining in there uh, right sides only. So now what do we do? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take tape because I love my tape <laughs> very, very much. And we're gonna put it over those basting lines that we made. So I'm going to go right over the very, very top of that zipper tape and add the double-sided tape. You don't have to go all the way to the edge. As you can tell, I didn't even do that. This one can get a little hairier because of pushing down, but that's why I just did a basting stitch along the edge. If you had done it a quarter inch in, then you'd be fighting a lot more of that curvature. So that's why I go right along the edge there, plus it's not really the final stitch. The final stitch is going to be when you actually stitch around that uh, inner rectangle there. So we've got that. Oh, make sure not to snip the zipper tape. There we go. I never snip zipper tape. So, fun thing. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the topmost. So go ahead and remove that protective film. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put my giant zipper pull like about like that, just so it can it can come through because I need to I need to basically pull it through to the other side, um, so it stays kind of out of the way, and then we're just going to eyeball and center the pocket. You can put your fingers on either side back here to kind of get a feel for where it's located, and once you feel like you have it in a good spot, I'm just gonna kind of press down the bottom there so I don't have to worry about it too much getting in my way of the visuals, um, I will go ahead and I will gently press that in like that or slam it with my fist like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm super professional, I swear to God. So now you can see if you were to push all this down that everything is nice and centered. So I can kind of lift up now and I can remove that secondary piece of tape, get rid of that protective film, make sure my zipper pull is on the other side. And now I'm just going to gently hold all of that down and push this into place. So just, just to hold it, just to make sure it does what it's supposed to do instead of fighting me like a preteen. 
Not that I would know anything about that, having preteens. Yay. Okay, so there is our zipper, and it is just about ready to stitch on in its final form. But here's the thing that I want to point out to you. If you were to go right now, without changing anything, and stitch all the way around, do you know what's going to happen? You're going to stitch through this bad boy and this bad boy, which means when you reach in on the final product, you'll be like, oh no, I actually don't have a pocket. <laughs> it's like women's jeans all of a sudden. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take this upper piece and just press it and keep it out of the way. So uh, if you're anything like me and you're using waterproof canvas and vinyls, uh, you'll understand that you probably don't have the capacity to, to just, you know, push it out of the way because it has a mind of its own. So I do clip these down after I finger press them and that's just to keep them from slipping and sliding all over. So you can see that I have them flush and pulled apart. So now when I go and I stitch, it's not going to, um, it's not going to close off the pocket from being able to be used. All right, so let's go sew it. Okay, I'm gonna start in the lower uh, corner here, but not exactly in the corner because I like to come around the corner and make sure that um, I don't run into and double over what I have done before. I mean, now I'm gonna make sure I'm at a top stitch length, which for me is 4.5. You can do whatever you like. You're an adult, I assume. <laughs> And I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I want to make this look really nice. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, the raw vinyl edge kind of peeking up at people and saying, hey, I'm, I'm totally vegan. I'm vegan leather, um, which is an amusing way to classify this stuff. Um, so now we're going to just top stitch all the way around. And... Mind you, when we come close to the actual zipper pull, I like to make sure that my uh, uh, needle is halfway down in the fabric. Then I can lift the presser foot and kind of just slide that zipper pull out of the way. Because otherwise, uh, you end up where your, your foot, if it's as wide as mine, just kind of bumps around it. And it makes this really unsightly looking um, like bump in, uh, in your top stitching. I'm going to pivot here. Now, I'm going to try pivoting and see where I land. And it looks pretty good. So that's a first for me. <laughs> Continue top stitching. Now, again, as we get close to the zipper pull, we're going to move that thing out of the way so it doesn't bug me. I'm going to slow down as I get to the corner and nice pivot. I might actually have to change this. Yeah, I might have to. So sometimes, sometimes you may have to slide up and manually pivot not too close to the, the previous hole or you're just going to basically perforate that corner, but it, just enough to get you lined up so it doesn't look weird or unprofessional. And then I backstitch and I'm done with that part. You know, we've got, we've got other parts to do. So I'm gonna trim really close to those original lines, go back underneath, boop, boop, boop. And now we're gonna go back over to the cutting table. Cool, so we have the zipper lay atta overlay attached. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove my clips now and if you, uh, you know, you can open and close this, but of course, like with everything kind of pulled out of the way, you won't see much of anything. But now you can flip it to the backside and pull down everything here with the zipper. So you can see, like, I didn't really like perf get it perfectly centered or anything like that. The important thing is that the functional area is, is here in the center and how it looks on the front. Even I don't perfectly center things. And when you fold this down, you're going to see that these don't line up. 
and and that's totally fine and totally expected and actually one of the things I do I at least for me because I don't follow pattern instructions for these kinds of pockets I just add them as I want um, I just like to wait and see uh, you know how far from the bottom it's going to need to be and then I'll snip it so I just trim it down. If you're following a pattern, bless. I mean, you 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 do you boo. Um, but this is this is just a you know for me. Um, so I'm gonna take some clips. I've got right sides together. And you do want to kind of smooth it out so it's laying flat. Otherwise, it'll actually make the front excuse me the front of your bag kind of look wobbly. So get it flat. Ah. Uh, I'm being, I'm being sassy today and I'm going to go ahead and clip that a little more just so it's not <laughs> showing as much. And then uh, I'll put more clips in here. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll take this and we're going to sew just from here and around to here. You don't need to sew across the top anymore. That's done. Your job is done. Bravo. Um, so now what we'll do is basically I'm going to show you how we've, you, you want to put the top up. So here's the exterior and you're going to just gently fold it out of the way. This, this will make it easier for you to see like where you need to stitch. The important thing is to make sure you stitch over that edge of the zipper there for that raw zipper so it doesn't come apart and start working its way out as your customer opens and closes that zipper. So now that we're back at the machine, you can keep a top stitch length if you want. I do kind of move back down to a construction length and for me, that's 3.5 for this kind of bag. And um, the exterior of the fabric is facing up and I just move it out of the way and I start at the top right corner and hold my thread tails. And I just start going down and I sew around. So we're going down the right side, stop, pivot, go down the bottom. Pivot. <laughs> and move more of the exterior fabric out of the way and go up, see daisy, right up to the tippity top. As we approach that zipper, back stitch up there, and that is basically it after you clean up your thread mess. All right, let's go see the final, the final product. All right, so everything's done. We basically stip, stitched all the way down this way. I mean, for me, I have plenty of, of zipper that's kind of overhanging. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and trim my, my life's mistakes out of the way, just, you know, you know, for reasons. And then of course, since I trimmed the zipper tape, I do like to go ahead and burn those edges down. But this is basically your zipper. And then on the front, when you open it up and peep inside, you now have your zipper. I don't know, it's dark. I should have used I should have used like sample stuff. I just always hate wasting materials, but I swear it looks great. It's perfect. So that's how you do a zipper overlay. And I swear it's I feel like it's a lot less hassle than doing a welt pocket zipper because I never have to sit here and wonder like did I get this even or is it pinched anywhere I, I just I love the look of this and of course it's a lot easier at least to me 